Hello, Reactives. Good morning and welcome to our touch point today, being the 23rd of uh, July 2023. Once again, my name is God Gift Austin. Royoya, your regular host on this channel and anchor to the Prayer Crown Church of God. This week is the last week of July by the grace of God. And I know that whatever that is due you will not pass you by in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like we always do it, what we do is that we pick topics, special topics, and uh, deliberate on them with scriptures to understand the mind of God towards us on those uh, areas or topics as it affects us on a daily basis. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, we have touched on the abstinence, and that is where we are now. And the last thing or topic or question that we raise in there is that why should we abstain? We have looked at it and we've known what uh, abstinence means to uh, deliberately avoid certain things for other things. Alright, so we have looked at uh, a few scriptures on the reasons we should uh, abstain and then in addition to that we see Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 that says guard your heart in all diligence because out of it proceed the issues of life now it says since our bodies are temple of the of, of the spirit of God we must be careful what we allow to enter it we don't want to profane God's temple with the misuse of food, alcohol, sex, drugs, or even our thoughts. Eating is an enjoyable daily experience God has given us. Yet, overindulging can become an unhealthy addition. Jesus himself created wine for a wedding celebration. But drinking in essence weakens our self-control and harms our health. Sex within marriage is good and healthy. For that relationship, but lost seek selfish player and leaves wrecked and the hollow relationship in in its wake. Whether we abstain to grow our self control to avoid a common temptation or to wait for when the time is right, our abstinence shows respect to the temple in our care. Praise the Lord. The battles of life are taken first of all in the heart. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, I want you to understand it that every battle in a man's life begins in the heart. It is not even the day a man commits a crime that he has certain not in the crime. The day he physically manifests the crime is not the day he committed the same crime. The day he committed the crime was the day he conceived it in his heart to do such a crime. But you will not know. For him also know that this thing has been conceived. Yes. So, but the day he commits it is the day everybody sees it. But the day he conceived is the day himself knew that he has actually started this crime. So, when you are defeated in your heart, you'll be defeated anywhere you go to. That is just it. Before people begin to confess negatively, they have conceived it, they have thought about it over time. And after a while, you see them begin to react to that which you have conceived in their heart. And if it is a fearful thing, they begin to speak fear into their life. Why? They have conceived that fear in their thought over a long time ago. So that is one of the reasons why we should abstain. We should mind the things that we put into our heart. Because it's not even the day that somebody takes a dangerous thing that he dies. But from the moment he takes that thing that is bad in his system, that is when death begins to take place in his system. So we now see the reasons why we must abstain. And we must guard our heart with all diligence. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 14 verse 21, the Bible says, It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else if it might cause another believer to stumble. Wisdom is profitable to direct. We eat food every day. 
we eat meat every day. So what if you stop, if you refuse to eat that meat in a particular day, does it change who you are? No. If you choose not to drink today, will it kill you? No. Just to save another life. Because we are fed to realize that the reason why we are living is not just because to for our own benefit alone. We are living for others. Our life as a believer, as a Christian, is evangelical. We live every day, whether you talk or by your attitude, we are winning souls or pushing them to hell. It is either you are winning souls for God or you are losing them from God to Satan. So it is not actually what we are saying, that we are lifting up holy hands that matters. It is what you are doing that matters. Before man, it is what we are saying that matters. But before God, it is intention to which you are doing that that matters. Man can judge you by your words, but God judges you by your actions. By your thought, it intentions to your actions. So we need to be very careful. Alright? We need to be very, very careful. The things we do, we must be disciplined. It takes discipline to abstain. If you are not disciplined, you cannot abstain. I've had so many people say, oh, a man, men are naturally uh, polygamous. They are naturally born to cheat. It is not true. There are many men, even me myself, I've seen things that even men will see and they cannot stand and run away. And I avoided it. You could say, oh, they gave you free food. It's free. But I refused it because of my own soul. Three minutes pleasure or perpetual pain, I rejected it. Praise the Lord. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13, the Bible said, If what I eat causes another believer to sin, I will never eat meat again as long as I live. For I don't want to cause another believer to stumble. You know, you have to be very cautious about the things we do. In other words, abstinence may be necessary to keep someone else from stumbling in their relationship with God. It may be necessary at times to stay away from things that might cause someone to look, someone who looks to you for guidance to go against the against their conscience. For instance, if a friend is recovering uh, alcohol, is recovering from alcohol. Who abstains from alcohol? Okay, if a friend is a recovering alcoholic who, who abstains from alcohol, choosing to drink alcoholic beverages in his presence to show respect for his conscience. What are we trying to say here? Abstain. Discipline yourself to save people because your life is not for you alone, it's for others. No matter how you choose to live it. You know the Bible said that the endless expectation of the people are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, they are sons. Until they manifest, the people will remain in dungeon. You say, oh, my life is my life, I enjoy it. You are not sensitive. There are people that just because you are just a security man and you smile to customers every day, that smiling alone has made their day and they go home rejoicing. You will not know you have won their souls. Well, because you are, you think you are there for money. Come on, handshake as one many souls. You now begin to live your life carelessly because you feel it is your own. It is, nobody should know how you will live or nobody should care. You are a careless person. You must discipline yourself, abstain from certain things because you will give account of whatever you do. And if the Bible said the endless expectation of the people, it means that they are waiting for you. So if you have been living as a prostitute for 20 years, it means for 20 years you have left people in the prison. Dying. You have left them in the prison. Suffering and suffocating to death. But the moment you choose to give your life to Christ, that is the day you begin to see their faces being brightened because there it shows that you are giving them hope that you are coming to minister to them. That is why I don't get offended with a whole building having over 10 churches. Because the truth is that no matter what you do, your members must never, will never be my members. Even if it means to kill the person, the next door person, 
the, his neighbor can never be your members. Because you are giving sheep to tend as a shepherd, your sheep can never be given to another person to tend to shepherd. If you don't abstain, you cannot grow. If you don't abstain, you will not hear God. You will never grow in grace. So I want to encourage you this morning. It is necessary to abstain from things that wrong your soul. From things that work against your life as a person. And as you do that this morning, I pray the Lord will grant you understanding. And uphold you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until we come again. Until I come your way next time. Please keep meditating, living, and studying the word. Go through all the clips that we have. There are a whole lot of them that God has prepared for you to help you restructure your lives. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.